Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. Since my last update, there has been a lot of quiet weather. But as we go through the first week of the forecast period, a big change is on the way. So let's see how things could develop. Here's the picture at 18 GMT on Monday, the 20th of January. There are some patchy outbreaks of rain in Wales, Northern England and the far northwest, but elsewhere it's mostly dry. Now, as I run the sequence, what we see is that an area of low pressure pushes down from northwest. It's going to bring some showery rain and maybe a little bit of snow into the north and some outbreaks of rain will be pushing across southern and central regions on Wednesday. But it's really in the following days that the big change starts to happen. The Atlantic steps up a gear, it's a vigorous flow moving across west to east and a very, very nasty looking area of low pressure close to the UK by the start of Friday. Now, there is uncertainty about the details of the track which it's going to be taking and just how intense it will be, but it certainly has the potential to bring disruptive conditions to parts of the UK. This is suggesting the worst conditions will be in the north and west, but I'll come back to this particular feature a little bit later on. So running the sequence forwards, what we see is that steadily moves away northwestwards. Then it's a showery picture, but for a further outbreaks of rain, another area of low pressure there, and another very deep one moving towards the UK or towards Iceland throughout the rest of the first week. So it's really an unsettled picture which becomes established and it could well be stormy for a time. There's a chance of some snow in the north, especially over high ground. Here's the jet stream and upper air temperature sequence. I think it illustrates quite well what's happening because to start off with the jet stream shown by the mottled shaded area is very fragmented and disorganized. But if we look out to the west, it's really getting its act together. That's a very powerful jet stream moving across the Atlantic out of North America towards Western Europe. So it's all change through week one. But in terms of what we can expect down at the ground level, let's have a quick look. At the time of filming, the UKV model, which I've been using in recent weeks, was not available to me, so I've fallen back to the GFS charts. This is the uh, picture on Tuesday, temperatures in the south, perhaps slightly below the norm, closer to it in the north, because of course the averages up there are a bit lower, mostly dry at this point. Then through Wednesday, for those outbreaks of rain moving across southern and central regions, there could be some showers in the northwest, although that's not shown at this point. Into Thursday, mixed really, some showery rain then the north, and I think some sleet or snow over the higher ground, mostly dry at this point in southern and central regions, but temperatures have edged upwards a little bit back to or slightly above the seasonal average. Into Friday, we're into double figures now, so on the mild side, there's rain there in the northwest, a little bit of snow being shown over the high ground. But through the weekend, this doesn't look too bad. These are the charts for midday on Saturday and Sunday, but I think they don't tell the full story because in the earlier and later parts of the day, there could well be some showers or long spells of rain moving across the country. And of course, the other thing, these are not shown is the wind speed forecasts, but say I shall look at that in just a moment because they are dependent upon the track of that area of low pressure, which I was talking about, which showed on the animation. And I'll just step out of the way so you can see these more clearly. They are the postage stamp plots for Friday the 24th of January at midday. Each one shows the forecast pressure patterns from one run in the GEFS model at that time. And you can see there are some differences still about the position of the low pressure and just how intense it's going to be. Most of these have it close to the northwest of UK. There are one or two which are bringing it further south, so across Northern Ireland, across central northern parts of Britain. But on the whole, they are generally taking it just to the northwest, just to the north, and one or two there, which really don't make anything out of it at all. So there's still a chance that this may not be such a potent feature, which, uh, which most of the models are suggesting it will be. Here's the 
Canadian model through the same time period. There's the low pressure. So it's tracking on this one, it's tracking really between Scotland and Iceland. The windiest conditions would be in the north and the west, but the very worst impacts of it, we would really be escaping with this track. Still wouldn't be great, it would still be windy and wet for a time, but as I say, the most severe weather would be probably just staying off to the northwest. The ECM model, in contrast, has that a little bit further south, closer, I think, to the GFS track. It's going across northern Scotland, but then later on, a second deep area of low pressure pushes up from the southwest, and that could be something to look out for. This, it's coming here through Saturday and Sunday. Very uncertain, of course, whether it will develop like this. Some of the other models are not indicating that it will, but the point to take away here is that if Friday's system doesn't turn out to be as bad as some of the runs are saying it will be, then we could still have further features down the line bringing stormy periods of weather. The, the key is not to think of it as Friday in isolation, but to really look at perhaps that week from Thursday onwards through to the following Thursday when there could be stormy conditions in the UK. This is the sequence from the GFS model showing wind speed gusts. You can see the worst of them are there in the west and really the north of the UK, although it's windy for a time even in the southeast, 40, 50, 60 mile an hour gusts, 70, perhaps 80 in the north. The ICON model, so this is one run by the German Met Office, is a little bit different. You can see those really strong winds, about 120 miles an hour, it's indicating there, just off to the west of Scotland. That would be extremely severe, of course, if the track was just slightly further south and east. Nonetheless, it's still a very, very bad picture up there. The GEFS wind speed gust forecasts on the, on the graph here are suggesting that things may not be quite as bad in the southeast as was looking likely a day or two ago, but don't take that as a given by any means. There are still quite a few runs going up to around 40, 50 miles an hour here around the 24th or 25th, one going above 60, and then later on from the 27th, a lot of the individual runs are showing strong winds again. So, as I've been saying, if this one doesn't get us in the southeast, then features down the line could well do. And the first one is likely to have more of an impact in the northwest. This is the Glasgow wind speed gusts. You can see a few there going above 60 miles an hour, one or two up to or just above 70 from this first feature. As I say, it does look like it's going to be more of a concern for the west and the north of the UK than perhaps the southeast. Although the flip side of that coin is that those parts of the UK experience strong winds more frequently, so they are more used to dealing with them. Further down the track, quite a lot of runs are going above 60 miles an hour again, indicating for more areas of low pressure uh, pushing in from the Atlantic and a tight pressure gradient across this part of the UK. Rainfall, days 0 to 5, the accumulations from the ECM and GFS models, wettest in the west and the northwest, that's what you would expect as the weather starts to come in from the Atlantic. Moving forwards to the 0 to 10 day period, there's good consistency really in terms of the accumulations between these two. The totals have continued climbing everywhere. Western Scotland seeing the most rain on the whole through the period, over 100 millimetres there in places. So, in more general terms, how do the deterministic models compare with each other towards the end of the first week? Here is the GFS on a Monday the 27th. It's an unsettled pitch with a deep area of low pressure to the west. With that said, there's a weak ridge of high pressure toppling across the UK, so just a quieter interlude maybe. The Canadian model has low pressure to the northwest and high pressure building more strongly to the southeast, but it's an unsettled Atlantic flow really across the UK. Similar with the German icon and the ECM, this looks potentially nasty. The low pressure a little bit further south, that means it's tracking across the UK and a very tight pressure gradient wrapped around it. So strong or very strong winds here if it's right. And the 
ECM artificial intelligence model shows something similar. Definitely keep an eye on this period. So take them all together, it's looking unsettled. If there's a chance of a quieter interlude, maybe high pressure having a little bit more influence just briefly there in the southeast. But the general message is it's unsettled and there is the potential at this point for stormy conditions. So really the risk of stormy weather starts around about Friday and it continues through the weekend into the end of the first week. It really is a case of following the short range forecast just to see how these different areas of low pressure develop. Now, how do things develop as we go through the second week? Does the unsettled theme continue? Let's see. Of course, it is just about the trends and the probabilities at this range. Here is the 16-day GEFS plot for London. Upper air temperatures across the top. The signal is for them to fluctuate, but generally to be close to the average, the thick purple line there, a little bit above the 30 year normal thick black line, and it dips slightly below it. There isn't a signal for very, very mild conditions to become established. Conversely, it's not looking cold either, but there will be a fluctuation. Towards the end there, there are one or two runs which are bringing in very mild air aloft, likewise one or two which are bringing in significantly colder air. Rainfall across the bottom, well, an ongoing risk for the first few days, but there is a signal there for dry periods to become more frequent later on. The two meter temperature data tables, light green is dominating, there's some yellow there early on and then it decreases, it increases again. Those are the very mild runs between 11 and 15 degrees, but it's the light greens through the days which are dominant between 6 and 10. So fluctuating around the average for late January. The overnight lows, there's quite a lot of dark green in there. Those are runs going for between one and four Celsius. So in quieter interludes, especially later on, the risk of ground frost starts to increase. The blue shading there in the comms towards the end shows runs which are going down to or below naught degrees. So the risk of air frost perhaps just ticking up a little bit towards the end up to Manchester. It's a similar picture across the top part of the plot. In terms of rainfall, well, there are more spikes there, so it's, it's wetter, especially through the first three or four days. The chance of dry interludes does increase, though, from the end of the month into the early part of February. With that said, it still seems to be a changeable picture. The two meter temperature data tables for Manchester following similar trends to the London ones. Really probably on the mild side through the days, through the first week, the overnight temperatures once more suggesting there is a chance of ground frost, even air frost when quieter interludes develop and the likelihood probably increases there towards the end of the week. Up to Glasgow, the message here is for 850 HPA temperatures really to be slightly below the average. That's a signal, not a very strong one, but that's what it's saying in terms of the precipitation. It's an unsettled pattern, maybe fewer spikes there towards the end, but all in all, it looks like there's an ongoing risk of rain through this second week. Now, I've just said that upper air temperatures could be slightly below the average. Does that suggest it will be cold enough for snow? Well, maybe early on there could be a chance of some wintriness, but the snow roll values there are decreasing as we go through the second week before just ticking up a little bit at the very end. But all in all, I would expect precipitation in this part of the world to be falling as rain at low levels, but go up onto the hills and into the Scottish mountains and it would be a different story. Here are the two metre temperatures for uh, Glasgow, more dark green through the day, so maximums between uh, one and five, but also quite a lot of light green there, so not especially cold. The overnight lows, a greater chance of frost when those quieter interludes come along and the skies clear if they do. Rainfall according to the ECM probability charts through the second week. These show the percentage chance of five millimeters or more of rain falling on the first three days. 
The orange shade around the west is showing that's where the greatest chance is. So the weather's coming in from the Atlantic. By the third day, though, the risk is starting to decrease and the same sort of trends continue through the next three days. It's still definitely likely to be wettest in the west, especially the northwest, the Western Isles, Western Scotland drier conditions more likely in eastern parts of Britain, particularly East Anglia and the South East. The mean surface level pressure data table for York gives some pointers here as well. We see it's a low pressure dominated to begin with, greens, blues, purples, really through the first few days, but then the amount of orange and yellow starts to increase and there is a signal at least that high pressure will be having more influence as we head towards the end of January. So with it building from the south rather than the north as, as appears to be very likely now, it would indicate there's a greater chance of dry periods in the south and the east of Britain. More of an Atlantic influence persisting in the west and the north, but really as I've been saying, still a chance of rain affecting all parts of the UK for much of the second week. And here's the GEFS mean surface level pressure snapshot chart for the 30th of January. What a contrast with the one I showed last week, if, you've, uh, if you can remember it. It had high pressure centered over Scandinavia. This really indicates that a west or southwesterly flow will be pushing right across the UK into Scandinavia, all the way to the right hand side of the chart with high pressure centered to the south. And the ECM ensemble really tells a similar story. It's a little bit more bumpy there, but it's still a case of high pressure to the south, maybe building northwards at times, but a vigorous Atlantic flow at this point at least being a likelihood across the United Kingdom, Northwest Europe more generally. So it would these would both suggest unsettled conditions at this time, a greater chance of drier spells in the south. So to summarize, week one starts with quiet and somewhat chilly weather, but it turns unsettled. There is a risk of snow in the north for time, especially over high ground. But the most important feature of the first week is likely to be the risk of stormy conditions. We could have a named storm. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that, but it's definitely a possibility. The worst conditions are likely to be in the north and the west, but do stay up to date with the short range forecasts because the intensity and tracks of those low pressure systems through the second half of the first week remain uncertain. Week two, unsettled with wet and windy or even stormy periods early on. There could also still be some snow over high ground in the north. But the chance of dry spells increases later, especially in the south. Temperatures will, of course, fluctuate on a day-to-day -day basis, but over the period as a whole, they are likely to be close to the norm in the north and a little bit above it in the south. So, there we have it. Stormy weather is on the way. The details, uncertain as I've been emphasizing because computer models still haven't pinned down the exact tracks of those low pressure systems and just how intense they will be. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. Then as ever, if you did, please consider hitting the like button below and subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. In that way, you'll not miss any of my future updates. Don't forget as well to stay up to date with the day-to-day -day weather developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks very much now. Bye. <laughs>